Hello, my name is Flavius Becca. I'm a fourth year medical student here at the University of Illinois College of Medicine, and today I'll be talking to you about a pediatric eye disease that actually helped spark my own interest in ophthalmology, ROP. We'll first discuss the basics of this disease, what it is and why it exists, and then we'll touch on the diagnosis, treatment, screening, and finally, a little bit on the global impact of the condition. But first, what is ROP? The best place to start is with the name, retinopathy of prematurity. At the most basic level, this is a problem of retinal development that can occur in premature infants. The normal retina begins developing during the second trimester. However, it continues to develop even after a full-term birth at 37 to 40 weeks gestation. Like the eyes, the lungs also finish developing late. Naturally, the first instinct would be to give premature babies oxygen to compensate for their less effective lungs. And indeed, interventions like these have been critical to lowering infant mortality among premature neonates. But herein lies the trouble. The developing retina is exquisitely sensitive to oxygen levels. Upon sensing higher concentrations of oxygen, the retina deduces it doesn't need any more blood vessels and shuts off vessel growth. However, as the neonate's lungs mature and the supplemental oxygen is removed, the retina begins to experience a relative hypoxia. So, to maintain the higher O2 concentrations it became used to, the retina produces vascular endothelial growth factor, or VEGF. VEGF stimulates the growth of more retinal vessels, which can deliver additional oxygen to correct that perceived deficiency. These new vessels, however, grow too quickly and are of poor quality, so they end up causing more problems, with the most severe consequence being the complete detachment of the retina from the inside of the globe. In turn, this means that globally, we have an estimated 32,000 babies annually that suffer from blindness or severe visual impairment from an early age. So who gets ROP? Well, as you might expect, based on our discussion so far, prematurity and low birth weight are the most significant risk factors. High levels of oxygen and prolonged mechanical ventilation are associated with severe and treatment requiring ROP. However, safe oxygen levels remain a matter of debate, especially given the much more worrisome consequences of not providing oxygen, which are death or permanent mental disability, from poor oxygen delivery to the brain. Other risk factors have also been described in the literature. However, it's hard to determine whether these represent independent risk factors or simply are secondary causes of prematurity or low birth weight. However, both the early treatment of ROP and the cryotherapy for ROP trials, which were two of the largest multicenter ROP trials, show that with lower birth weight and a greater degree of prematurity, rates of ROP increased. In fact, the screening guidelines are largely based on the results of these trials. In the U.S., any baby born at or below 1,500 grams or at or before 30 weeks gestation should undergo ROP screening by an ROP specialist. The WHO actually estimates that 2.3 million are born before 32 weeks gestation, which by U.S. screening guidelines are at significant risk for developing ROP. To understand how ROP is treated, we must first discuss how ROP is described clinically and diagnosed. ROP is evaluated based on three sets of features. First, the location within the retina of the aberrant development, second, the severity of that abnormal process, and third, the vascular characteristics of vessels at the posterior pole. The location is described by zones, which form these concentric rings around the optic nerve. Zone 1 makes up the posterior pole, while zone 2 and 3 describe the mid and far peripheral retinas, respectively. At the mildest end of the spectrum, stage 1 ROP, the retina appears flat and stops prematurely, forming a line where vessel growth ends. In stage 2, aided by stereoscopic examination, the retinal boundary is seen as a raised ridge, while in stage 3, abnormal vessels are also observed along the periphery. Finally, stage 4 and 5 describe the end consequences of the pathologic vessel growth, which is retinal detachment. Stage 4 being a partial detachment where some vision might be surgically salvaged, while stage 5 is a complete detachment. The term plus disease is used to describe vascular features that indicate higher risk of progression and the need for treatment. 
This is used when retinal vessels are more dilated and tortuous than normal, particularly in the posterior pole. And it occurs because of increased shunting of blood to the retina from the stronger hypoxic stimulus of more severe disease. Treatment of ROP can be divided into two categories, intervention to prevent progression of disease and, in advanced disease, surgery once the retina has already begun detaching. Because the sequelae of ROP are driven by perceived hypoxia and the release of VEGF, treatment is oriented at interfering in that cascade. Ablative therapies destroy cells in the peripheral retina, preventing those cells from secreting more VEGF and allowing normal retinal development to resume. Cryotherapy, or the killing of tissue by freezing it with an external probe, has now largely been superseded by laser, which is seen to have fewer side effects and is easier to perform. Anti-VEGF injections are now seen as a promising alternative to ablative therapy altogether. Injections are technically less challenging to perform, do not require general anesthesia, and save the peripheral retina. Also, their therapeutic effects are much faster. However, as a newer tool, the long-term sequelae are unknown. Once detached, more invasive procedures are necessary to reattach the retina. A scleral buckle involves surgically placing a compressive band around the globe, just under the rectus muscle attachment, to help physically reattach the retina and prevent recurrent detachments. It's important to realize that treatment themselves are not without consequences. The more severe the ROP, the more severe and frequent the side effects. Unlike adults, buckles and vitrectomies are more likely to produce side effects like cataracts, high myopia, and amblyopia in children. Ablative therapies, meanwhile, destroy the peripheral retina, which can cause visual field restrictions and can also increase the risk of cataracts, corneal haze, and pigmentary lesions. It is important to realize that treatments themselves are not without consequences. The more severe the ROP, the more severe and frequent the side effects. Unlike in adults, buckles and vitrectomies are more likely to produce significant side effects like cataracts, high myopia, and amblyopia in children. Ablative therapies, meanwhile, destroy the peripheral retina, which can cause visual field restrictions and also increase the risk of cataracts, corneal haze, and pigmentary lesions. Screening babies allows those who develop ROP to be treated and be treated earlier reducing the risk of more invasive interventions or the effects of advanced disease. Screening guidelines are based on those large studies mentioned earlier, which recommend all babies born 30 weeks or younger and 15 grams or lighter to be screened with serial exams until the retina is fully vascularized. This concludes our discussion. Thank you for listening.